I'm going to give you a demonstration today on lidded containers and on teapots. And we're going to start out uh, by doing lidded containers, and then I'm going to show you how the teapot ties directly into that. I think I better get rid of the hat, though. It's hot. You know, so we'll get rid of that. Here, Marty, you look like you should wear it. Okay. So this is your last assignment, the very last assignment that you're going to be doing. And what is going to happen here is that you're going to see how all of the previous assignments tie into this last final assignment. I'm going to talk to you a lot, <laughs> okay? Okay, on, on the assignment that you had where you did the exaggerated lip and the exaggerated foot, you're now going to see how that ties into your final assignment as well as the bottle assignment that you had, how that's going to tie into this. And so I'll point those things out to you as we go along. Um, on the lidded container, okay, everything that I've been showing you to this point, you'll notice that I've been teaching you through repetition. It's repetition, repetition. I'm trying to teach you technique. Repetition is great for learning, but repetition does not necessarily produce art. In fact, it has a tendency to kill it, okay, because it takes away from all that freedom and that spontaneity. So you have not, at this point, been taking a lot of incredible risks, but we're going to get to that once we get this semester over with. So on the lidded container, what I want you to do is throw all of your lids first. Don't throw lid, pot, lid, pot, because it breaks that repetition up. So I want you to throw all of your lids first. And I'm asking for six lidded containers. The last day that you have to make uh, pots is on the 13th of November. OK, so they all have to be done at that time. I want you to throw at least 12 lids, because the only way that you're going to really learn what a lid feels like is to throw it in repetition over and over and over again. Also, if you have, have a tendency to lose your lids, which you will when you're making them fit the pots, you will have extra ones, then you won't have to you know, go, oh my god, I've got a pot here, I've lost my lid, now what do I do? The thing that I'm trying to teach you to see when you make a lidded container is how to get a positive form, meaning the lid, to fit into a negative space. And your eye will become over a period of time, very, very keen. If you've been loading kills, that will help you a lot because you've learned how to put an object to fit into a specific um, space. Okay, so if you haven't been loading kills and now you're making lidded containers, I would suggest that you get out there and load kills. Okay, because it does help you start to see that kind of thing. <laughs> when I first started learning how to make lidded containers, what I did is I just sat down and I threw 100 lids. And I just lined them all up on boards and then covered them with plastic that night. And then the following morning, I came in and I started throwing lidded containers. And what I would do is like, you know, I'd throw a pot and then I'd look over at the board and see if I could grab a lid that I thought would fit the space. Well, by the time I'd done about 20 of them, I was pretty good. Okay, and it got better and better and better. So you're going to start to be able to learn to see that kind of thing. Okay, so first of all, do the lids. Now, with the lidded container, there's one thing that you have to watch that you didn't have to really concern yourself with before except for trimming. And that is that you don't want the lids to dry out. Because if you let the lids dry out, all the moisture is going to be out of the lid, and then you're going to go to make it fit the pot, and the pot is still wet. The pot has not yet shrunk. OK, so you're going to have a dry lid, and you're going to be putting it in a wet pot, and it's not going to fit once the pot shrinks. So what it is going to require of you is to come in here extra times, OK, to check your lids to make sure that they're, they're not drying out too fast on you. Like especially today, if you start making them, and you've got the weekend going, they could dry out, so make sure that you cover them over the weekend. And then come in on Monday afternoon, check them, see how they're doing. OK, so you're going to have to keep an eye on them. All right, and that's part of the nature of ceramics, OK, is keeping an eye on the clay. So, and it's drying, how it's drying. So I'm going to start you out with lids. And sometimes beginners really like lids because you get to throw or open up off center. Now, we're going to throw with a little bit larger piece of clay than what is necessary to make a lid. But when you have a larger piece of clay, it's easier to center, it's easier to throw. So we're going to get into the idea of subtraction. To this point, what you've been doing is every time you put clay on the wheel, you're throwing all of the clay. This time, what you're going to do is you're going to throw, and then you're going to subtract. OK, what happened to my bug pick? Could you grab my bug pick for me over there? I'm going to need it. OK, so we'll center this up. And I won't go through all of the basics again, because you're all doing really, really well. Have you noticed now, all of a sudden, how 
well you're throwing the last two weeks. You're not noticing it? Everybody else is. <laughs> okay. Now, to open, rather than opening on center, which is something that we usually do, what we're going to do now is open off center. And it's all I want you to do is take your left hand and hold it like this, and you'll notice that the knob is already starting to form. Now take your index finger of your right hand and just push, like so. Okay, and basically we have a lid, but now we've got to go to work on it. When you throw the lid, the lid to the container, what I want you to think about is this. This lid should be exactly about the same thickness as your pots are going to be. The floor of the lid, don't have a great big thick floor, you want it about the same as the bottom of a pot. Okay, the same thing that you've been doing the entire semester. Now what we're going to do is take this clay and we're going to pull the walls up. We're just going to lift them. Now one thing I want you to be aware of is that when you're throwing lids, is what are your throwing capabilities? Sometimes I get people and they make lids that are like this big and they can't make the pots to fit them. So concern yourself with that kind of thing. I forgot my sponge too. I thought I had everything here. Oh, I must have set it over there for when we do the teapot. Thank you, dear. Okay, now get the water out of the inside. And when you look at this, I want you to think about something. When you have a lid that is really tall, it's very, very difficult to get it to fit into a pot because you've got to get all of this clay to fit into the opening. Okay, you've got all of this clay to concern yourself with going into an opening. Plus that, what you have when you make a lid that's really, really tall is that it consumes all of your storage space. Okay, so it takes all the space out of the container. So the ideal is to have a very short lid. So we're going to just cut this off, called subtraction. Now what we'll do is come back, put a lip on it, just like you've done with all of your pots. Okay, now there's another thing you should watch for. Right now what we have is the lid has got a slight angle to it. You notice that when I hold the rib up to it? But it's also got a curve in it. When it has a curve in it, it's also going to be difficult to get to fit. So what you want to do is set that on an angle. What this is, in a sense, is exactly the same thing that I asked you to do when I asked you to do the exaggerated foot. Okay, and you'll notice that when I do this, I'm going to set this down like this, remove the clay, set it under here, and pull this lid up against the rib so that it goes on an angle like this. Now when we make this lid fit, the only thing that we're really concerned about is making the lip fit. So we're looking at this negative space, or this positive form right here to fit into the negative space. Okay, so it's got to have that angle. The other thing, your lip, you've got to soften the edges. Okay, now we have one more thing. This knob right now is this thick. This clay, when it shrinks, if we left it just as it is, would require more shrinkage than this clay. So it would shrink and pull right away from the rest of the lid. So now this is where the bottle assignment comes in. This is exactly, it's identical to the neck on the bottle. So you're going to like open it up with your fingers. Don't get it real wet. And you're going to pull it just exactly like the neck. But now we're going to go one step further. Where on the neck to the bottle, you just threw it like this. You learned how to pull with your fingers. This, what I'm going to show you now, is your first introduction to a closed form in ceramics, okay? We're going to close this up and make this a knob. And it's identical to when you were doing the bottle and you grabbed it by the shoulder with your thumbs and your middle fingers and you squeezed in. Okay, we're doing exactly the same thing, only it's, the hand isn't embracing it. Now it's just fingers. We're going to push this across and close that up. Okay, this knob right now kind of looks like a football player. It doesn't have a neck. Okay, and if you glazed it, it's the kind of thing that if your hands were wet, would slip right by. Okay, so we want to give it a neck so that you have something to grab onto. So we'll just squeeze in here. Now this knob is full of air, so it's going to take whatever shape I give it. It's going to hold it. And by the way, since it's full of air, when this knob is completely, you know, when I get the lid completely finished, 
what you're going to want to do is just poke a hole in the bottom with your bug pick, and that way it won't blow up in the kill. I want you to play a little bit. There's all kinds of things you can do with the knobs. You can put peaks on them, you know, with your ribs. You can start playing. A lot of you aren't playing very much. You know, you're just like being real, like worried and serious about, oh my God, I can't make a mistake. You can flatten them out. There's all kinds of possibilities as to the kinds of things that you can do, you know, with these and, and just start playing with your tools. You're at a point now where you should be taking more chances. I like them to look kind of like real hand thrown. How do you get this thing off without distorting it? When you're doing uh, lids, and especially when you don't have bats, just put some water down on the wheel, slide your wire under it, and you'll notice that it just releases it. When you go to handle that lid, one thing that's really important is to make sure, first of all, that your hands are really clean. Okay, water. Or dry is okay too, but they should be clean. They shouldn't have a lot of sticky clay on them. And then just push it. All right? Now also, as well as doing the um, lidded container, I'm going to show you at the same time for the advanced people how that lidded container really very simply, with all the same things that we've talked about the bottle form, can turn into a teapot very, very quickly. And for the advanced people, this is your first introduction into how to construct, how to put things together. One thing that is really, really important that you do is that you constantly do what we call critical thinking, that you start thinking about how one thing relates directly to another. Don't think of things in separate terms, that, oh, this is a lid, this is a bottle, but start looking at the forms that you're dealing with and how they relate to something else. You'll notice that every single assignment I've given you constantly relates to the next thing. Okay, so there's all these possibilities that exist, but now you've got to get into some critical thinking. What does this thing look like? What else could it be? Okay, and that's where like teapot starts to come in because the spout on a teapot really is a little bottle. That's what it really is with the bottom cut out and, and some cutting on it. But what we're really talking about when you take an art class is problem solving. That's what we're really doing here. It's not just how, but what is possible. You know the old thing we say in here, let's master the possibilities? Okay. When you do a spout, there's several things that you should think about. First of all, if you make a spout really, really long and you go to pour, that tea is going to leap out of the teapot. Okay? If you make them really, really short, they're going to drool and dribble. You know, you go to a Chinese restaurant, okay, they've always got this little rubber hose on the end of the spout. Those teapot spouts are too short. Okay, so you don't want it quite that stumpy, stumpy okay, but you don't want it, well, maybe you do want it real long. Maybe the thing is going to become you know, more visual or more aesthetic in terms rather than strictly functional. And one thing I want you to think about is that we live in a society basically that is, we are not tea drinkers. We are coffee drinkers. So what else maybe do you want to put in this so-called teapot or we'll call it a teapot but it's a pot with a spout on it. Okay, so what else, you know, do you want to put in it? Maybe you want to serve juices or whatever out of it. You're going to want it a lot larger. And are you making two, tea for two or tea for ten? <laughs> you know, so how big do you want this teapot to be and how do you want it to function? I'll show you in traditional terms, you know, how to make a, a teapot really, really function. And, and what I mean by a traditional teapot is I mean one that holds tea leaves, not a tea bag. So I'll show you ways to make it trap, you know, the tea leaves, that kind of thing. So right now we're just going to sh throw a spout here. Got a lot of clay. Let's get rid of some of this. The other thing is that spout. You know, when you look at um, a teapot, it has that that little curve down at the bottom, and then it narrows up. Okay, that little curve is to trap tea leaves. If you get that curve really, really exaggerated, you know, like a really, really round bottle type form and you 
cut that, dissect that, and put that on the pot. Then when you get, go to pour, it's going to trap air. And when you're pouring, it's going to go gurgle, 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 and then gushes are going to come out as it passes the air. Okay, so you've got to think about all of these things. So we'll do one that's kind of small. We'll pull this up, little bottle. Gonna get the water out of there. And I throw them with a the bottom. You don't have to. The reason that I throw them with the bot bottom is because they're a lot easier to get off the bat or off the wheel head. If you go straight through to the wheel head, they're just a lot more difficult to get off. Okay, so I'm just closing this off. This is just like a bottle. Okay, now when you make this spout, there's a couple things to think about. How do you want your liquid to pour? If you have it kind of narrow like this, it's going to come off in a straighter stream. If you take this spout and pour them, or, or put it out like this, alter it, it's going to pour in a much broader stream. So it'll have a tendency to cool more as you pour. Okay, so what is it that you're looking for? You know, and try to make those kinds of associations. Let me get this just, I can get it a little shorter. I make mine kind of flat across the top and just soften the edge a little bit. That's just a little short. This will make a really nice pouring spout about this long. And I can't tell you how long that is. I've never measured it. <laughs> I just, you know, eyeball it. The other thing is you want to get a very, very small foot on it so that when we go to attach it, we have an area that we're going to cut away. Okay, so that's the spout. So you've seen the lid to the teapot, the lid to the lidded container, and a spout now. And we'll just move it over. Marty, put that over by the fan. Okay, now we'll make the container. What are you guys laughing about? Oh, quick? Yeah, well, I don't have time to fool around. <laughs> so to speak, you know. Huh? <laughs> okay, now, you know, think about how big you want this thing to be, how wide, how broad. And what do you think a teapot should look like? You get to be inventors, remember? You'll be quick, too, one day. I know it seems impossible right now, but it's, you will. I remember one time when I was in school, you know, and I went out to uh, Claremont. This was when I was like, got my first master's, went out to Claremont, and I'd been doing clay for about maybe a year and a half, and Soldner sat down and gave a demonstration, and somebody asked him, well, how long have you been throwing? And he said, 20 years, and I went, God, 20 years, I wonder if I'll ever get that good. You know, but it's just years and years and years of sticking with it. Lip, we need that lip. Lip, collar this in, just like you did the bottle. We can always pull clay out, but don't let it get too far out of hand when you start. Get rid of this. Come in here and give this thing some form. We'll define it here a little bit. foot on it. You can start making some decisions about the foot now too, you know, how, how big do you want it, you, you know how to do an exaggerated one, you know how to do a small one now. Start looking at the form of that pot and deciding how it is that you want it to be. Because I'm not going to put any restrictions on the foot on this one. It's entirely up to you. 
The other thing that I want you to think about is, you know, when you're making teapots or pouring pitchers, something that's going to hold a lot of liquid, how heavy do you want that thing to be? You know, because this hand's going to go, huh? <laughs> okay, so get as much weight out as you can. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make a lid fit, what's correct, what's incorrect on a fit. I'll just take this. Clean the hands again because we're going to have to handle this lid. The lid should fit lip to lip. Slide it off there. Okay, but, but let me show you what also what's incorrect and what's correct. And that just comes like from years of just like looking, seeing. Okay, if the lid sits up above, do you see that? Can you all see how it sits above? Okay, that's, uh-uh. This would also be real incorrect. And that is when the lid sits down inside. That's also incorrect. You notice one thing, I'm not letting go of the lid. There's a reason for that, you know. <laughs> if I let go of it and stand back and admire it, okay, it will stick. And I can't show you how it will stick because I have to have this stiffened up for my night class, okay, to demonstrate to them how to put the teapot together. But if you just set it on there, especially the clay that we're using right now, it's, um, it's real sticky clay. But if you put it on and go, ah, and then leave it there, it will stick, okay? So that's how you make a lidded container, okay? Do you have any questions on this or is there any part of it you don't understand or anything you want me to redo or anything? You did mention that the lids are gonna dry out. So are the, how, how dry are the lids when you're testing them to the pot? Oh, just so that you can handle them. They're not quite as wet as this. But just so that the surface, the, the question is how dry should the lid be when you go to test it for the pot? You just want the surface moisture off of it. That's all. Okay, if, it, if the thing sits for a half hour, the surface moisture is going to be gone. Okay, if you put them in the damp room and you completely cover them with plastic, the moisture is going to be gone. Okay? Anything else? No? Now you want to see how to put a teapot together? Okay, this is where we get to have some fun. <laughs> all right, let me see, why don't I? This over here. Now, you know, I give you the option to trim or not to trim, and this is when you have to decide if you want your teapot trimmed. And if you're going to trim it, you should trim it now, not after the handle is on it, because it just won't work. I personally don't trim my teapots, but I do, of course, clean the foot up, and I expect that. Now, one thing about a teapot, anything that holds a hot liquid or, or cold liquid, in that, in, as a matter of fact, either one, okay, you have this really, really broad base, they're going to sweat. Pots are going to sweat when they have a broad base like this. If you don't want to trim that out, just tap it. Okay, and you'll eliminate a lot of sweating. Also, another thing, if you just push this in a little bit, you now have air, an area for air. So it'll dry a lot better without cracking. If they sit, anytime you get a real broad bottom on a pot and you sit it down flat, it has to shrink across the surface. Okay, so if you just tap it, you allow space for air. Okay, and then you should not have the problem of cracking. Okay, now we're going to do a teapot. Whoops. You can add that right out, right? <laughs> okay, when you're going to do a teapot, what happened to my bug pick? I thought I had one of those too. No, that's an ice pick. Need a bug pick. Okay, first of all, we're going to put the spout on it. What I want you to do is just to cut this out of the bottom of the bottle. Okay, now when you have this spout, if you went to put it on the pot just like this, you can see the problem that you would have. 
Okay. Plus, wherever you put this spout, if you put it down here, you have decided that your water level is this high. Okay, because wherever the bottom of the spout is, that's where your water level is going to be. Well, you know that you want it up like this. How can you do that? So I want you to start thinking about that kind of thing. You just take this thing very simply, and we're going to cut it. Kind of like biology. We'll just dissect this right across. Okay, we cut that off. Now we have this thing. Cut off all the excess clay in this thickness area. And notice that I'm not working with real wet clay. I'm also not working with bone dry clay. This clay is leather hard. Okay, and that is the what you want. We'll get rid of all this extra clay. Now, if you put it like this, it's still not going to work. But because it's leather hard and we can still work with it, we'll spread this out. OK, we can just pull this out. So now it will fit on the teapot, like so. And it also comes up, so your water level is going to be up here. Okay, you can raise it higher if you want. You can bring it above. Okay, but on, on these, what I did is I put the line in here to define the change of form. So I'm going to acknowledge that one more time. So I am going to attach the, tea, the, the spout right here. Okay, now, when you attach clay to clay, when you start constructing and you start building, it's really, really important that you score it. And I don't mean this. If you, if you have, happen to be one of these people that draws lines, it won't work. Cone 10 will show you exactly what you're doing wrong when you start making pieces fit onto other pieces. So you have to really, really score it. And I use water or slip. Either one is fine. It softens this clay and it's going to make it more, it's going to make it softer so that it can attach. And I mean really rough this surface up. Really, really rough it up. OK, so that it's very, very rough. OK, can you see that? OK, it shouldn't just have lines or marks, but it should be very, very rough. All right? Now, after you scored it, decide where it is that you want it on the pot. When it's scored, you just set it on like so. It is going to mark the pot for you. OK, as to where it goes. And then we're going to rescore this and make sure that it stays kind of on the damp side so that that clay softens so that it can adhere really, really well. OK, now I can set it down here. A pencil is the best thing for making the holes for a teapot. You know where the spout's going to go. So just take the pencil, make it wet. There is no formula, really, as to how many holes or how far apart the holes should be. But if you have one large hole in this, what is going to happen is that it's just going to goosh out. Okay, this filters the leaves and as well as lets the um, tea flow. I'm doing this for the video camera, so I have to work differently. Now, um, <clears throat> the inside of the teapot, you notice that you have all of these rough edges in there. Don't try to wipe them out because those help collect the tea leaves. Okay? So make sure that you leave them in there. If you don't, if you're going to use tea bags or something like that or juice, then you can when you poke your finger through. Just hold your finger behind the pencil and you won't have that. But I left that intentionally. The other thing that is really helpful if you're going to use real tea leaves and you want it to collect the leaves, is just to take this area and just push it in slightly. OK, and then when it pours past that surface on the inside, it will collect. It'll help trap the leaves. OK, so now that we have that done, we're going to score this. Score the teapot. And you know where the line is, so score just on the inside of it.
can rough it up. And don't worry about how this looks. I mean, some people will go, well, I don't like the way it looks. But it has to look that way. You've got to get this to attach. <clears throat> We're going to put it on here. So make sure you get a really good joint down at the bottom. That's where they always come apart. Tap it on, press it on. Now this area right here, okay, you can't, obviously you can't push and squish that onto the pot. So this is the area where you want to take the clay of the pot and push it into the spout. And then get, I always get my thumb across it like this. And you push that right in. And if you just push this down, it will attach. It helps sometimes to just take it and tap it. Watch me knock this lid on the floor. You can use the end of your uh, trim tool. When I'm making a lot of teapots, when I do them, one of my favorite tools for tapping the spout into shape is a butcher knife. And the reason for that, what I do is I just take it and tape the blade. And then I hold the blade and use the handle, okay, to tap it in. And the reason for that is, is that the blade has a spring to it, okay, and it just comes right back. And you don't have a lot of marks on the spout. Okay, by nature, I like to put things together in a way that shows how I built them. Like, I don't... Um, try to hide or deny what it is that I've done. Okay, so I'm not the type that comes along and smooths this all out, but you can, you know, if you want to do that. But I tend to work very, very direct by nature. So rather than hide or deny how I've made that teapot, I usually come in and define it, acknowledge it. And a pencil is an excellent tool for doing that. Don't try to get the scrap clay out with your fingers, it won't work. You just take it and draw it. It also helps when you do this to seal where that joint is. Now you can come in here and do drawings on your teapot, whatever. Now if you want a teapot that pours really well, after you've got your spout on it, you know where it's lined up on center and everything, just take your pencil and give it one little line there. And that will give it a place to pour, and it also should stop the pot from dripping. OK? So we have the lid. Oh, yeah, the lid. <laughs> Clean it up, too. And my suggestion, since you're in a classroom situation, is not only, you know, don't just put your name on your pot, but also put it on the lid as well. OK, and another thing that is really important that I'll mention at this time is that when you go to glaze, hmm. When you go to glaze this, wherever the lid touches the pot, there can be absolutely no glaze, no glaze whatsoever. So this whole area is completely raw, and this area right in here is completely raw. Wherever you know that that lid touches, that is raw. Okay, so don't glaze it because you can glaze that thing on there really, really quickly. And when it's glazed on, I can't get them off. But if it's just, now this is another thing you're going to notice as beginners that's going to horrify you at first. You're going to get your lidded containers out of the kill. You know that you've done them absolutely right, and the lid is stuck on. OK, what it is, it's the sand particles that are grabbing hold of one another. So don't be upset. Just bring me the pot, and I'll show you how to knock them off with a 2 by 4 OK, it's real easy. OK, no, we don't quite go, <laughs> OK? So it's easier than that. So now we'll do. Um, Oh, yeah, didn't I say that already? Yeah, so we'll just, you know, I never do this, and mine never blow up, <laughs> but I know other people that don't do it, and they do blow up, so. <clears throat> okay, we'll pull a handle here. So we'll do one that attaches behind it now. The other thing, when you're doing handles, what I want you to look at is that 
you know, you, you've got something here that is going to hold a liquid and pour. When you, when you put a handle on it, take into consideration, you know, how massive should that handle be? What should the volume of that handle be? Don't put some little wimpy handle on a pot that's supposed to hold five gallons of water, you know, because your eye won't want to use it. It'll be suspicious the entire time <laughs> that the handle will snap off. I have to do this standing up. I want this wider, so I do it like this. I'm going to have to make this kind of like on the thick side because it's so wet. Okay, let's do this guy. Turn this so you can see what I'm doing. Make sure I get this lined up and not off center here. If you cut that handle on an angle, it fits real nice against the pot. And then later you can go back in and clean this up, but right now we got to get it stuck on. And notice the negative space that you make. And how is it going to feel? OK. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions at all? Right. Right. No. No. Because the only, the, okay, the question is that when you poke the holes into the teapot, you know, to make the strainer to trap the leaves, the question is, is it a problem to keep it clean? It's not a problem to keep it clean. The only, the, the function of the, the strainer really is just to trap the leaves. That's it. And you just, I wouldn't run my fingers in there to clean it, you know. But it's, it's really just a functional thing. And then I usually, on the teapots that I have, when I use tea leaves, I usually just sh shake water in them, and it knocks all the leaves loose, and then pour it out. Any more questions? That's it? God, you guys understood it all, right? I'm glad. OK, till next time. Thanks, you guys.